Hi. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about 3D printing. Uh, I'm relatively new to 3D printing. I've only printed three parts. You can see them uh, here. But I wanted to make this video for people who are maybe familiar with the concept but haven't had a chance to kind of play around with it uh, and aren't sure what to expect in terms of real-world results. Um, all the parts here, I'm going to walk you through them, but uh, all of them were designed using uh, Google SketchUp, or I think it's maybe Trimble SketchUp now, but SketchUp. Uh, they were all designed using SketchUp, and they were all printed uh, by Shapeways. Um, Shapeways is one of a bunch of um, online companies that does, you know, custom 3D printing from files, uh, and then they, you know, create the parts for you, and then they mail them to you. So I've been pretty happy with Shapeways so far. Uh, and I love SketchUp as a, a design tool, so that's sort of where these came from. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through kind of how these turned out. Uh, the first thing I'm going to walk you through is uh, basically an end stop for the Festool LR32 system. You can see the LR32 guide rail here. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about the LR32 system, about Festool in general, because I would be here forever. Um, but basically what I want to talk to you about is sort of why I created this end stop and then ultimately, you know, how it works. Um, the LR32 system, without getting into detail, um, it's basically a shelf pin jig on steroids. So if you look in your cabinets, um, probably in your kitchen or maybe, you know, in your office, um, those cabinets have shelf pin holes that allow you to adjust the shelves up and down. And the LR32 system, it basically uses a, a router mounted on a sliding, um, you know, guide system here to interface with these holes and drill holes in the piece of plywood or, you know, piece of cabinet material 32 millimeters apart on center. So these are exactly 32 millimeters apart. Uh, and it creates shelf pins, but it also creates mounting holes for drawer slides and hinges and, um, you know, assembly. And it, it's a really, really neat system. Um, it comes with from, you know, when you buy it from Festool, it comes with two of these end stops here. Uh, these are metal bars. They're actually pretty hefty. Um, and the, you can see it has the knob that allows you to basically screw it uh, into the rail over here. Uh, and you screw the knob through one of these holes. And it's threaded, so it's only a one-sided knob. Um, it just kind of holds it in from the top. And the Festool Guide Rail uh, guide end stops basically allow you to position um, the holes up from the edge of your piece of wood. So if you pretend for a second that this edge of my table here is the edge of your piece of cabinet wood, um, you would basically put this end stop um, onto your guide rail here, screwing it through one of these holes, and then you'd slide the guide rail um, until the end stop comes into contact with, your, um, with the edge of your piece of wood. And when you do that, depending on how you have the end stop set, it's basically going to cause the hole, the first hole that you drill, to be a certain distance from the edge of your piece of wood, right? Um, and so in the case of the Festool end stop, you can see the numbers. It allows you to position it 16 millimeters from the edge, uh, 32 millimeters from the edge, or 9.5 millimeters from the edge. And I'm not going to get into why or you know, what all that means, but those are the numbers that Festool uh, allows. Um, this end stop allows different numbers. Um, you can see on the side of it here, um, I, I engraved it. I figured I'd try that out too when I was doing this 3D print. It actually came out really nice. Um, this says for Bloom Tandem Slides. So Bloom is a hardware uh, manufacturer. They manufacture really, really nice drawer slides and cabinet hinges. Um, and they have a system that uses these 32 millimeter holes, um, but it's slightly tweaked. So it's called Bloom Process 32. Uh, and in that system, um, the first hole, when you're putting drawers in a cabinet, the first hole that you drill needs to be 46 and a half millimeters from the edge of your piece of, uh, of wood. And if you're putting a door on a cabinet, not drawers, but a cabinet door, the hinge, the, the center part of that hinge, needs to be 62 and a half millimeters from the edge of your piece of wood. And so what most people do is they take the Festool uh, end stop and they set it to the 32 millimeter um, position. And then they basically cut themselves a piece of plywood that is, um, you know, 32 and a half millimeters to get, or 30 and a half millimeters to get you to 62.5 or 14 and a half millimeters to get you to 46.5. And they basically just insert that little skinny piece of plywood in between the end stop and the edge of their piece of uh, wood. And that causes the, 
you know, that, that basically locates these holes in the right place. But then every time you pick this guide rail up and, you know, move it to a different um, piece of wood to drill the next set of holes, that little skinny piece of plywood has fallen out. You have to, you know, you have to get it off the floor, put it back in. It's just a pain. So I figured as just a fun, what the heck kind of a project to try uh, to make one of these things out of um, uh, plastic, specifically for Bloom Tandem drawer slides. Um, so you can see I've got I've got this came out really nice. I can even come in here if the camera will focus. It came out really nice, the the labeling, and then I've labeled it up here on the top, uh, 46.5 and two holes because you have to count off holes. I'm not going to get into that, but it, but it works is the point. Um, and then over here we've got uh, 62.5 and three holes. Uh, so that's that's that. And then because this is plastic, um, and all of the parts here, they, they're printed in what Shapeways calls their strong, flexible plastic. Um, this part uh, was, I guess when it was finished, it was sort of tumbled in like a, in like, I forget what those are called, but like a rotary tumbler to kind of smooth it out. And it's, it's, it feels like plastic. These, um, you can definitely tell that they were 3D printed because they feel kind of sandy is the best way to put it. They're strong. Um, I'm not going to test the flexibility because I don't want to break them, but they, you know, they feel a little bit, a little bit sandy, a little bit rough. Um, but they're all Shapeway strong, flexible plastic. It comes in a lot of colors. These are just white because it's the cheapest, um, but strong, flexible plastic. And because it's plastic, I was not able to thread it like the metal end stop from Festool is threaded. So I basically went on, um, well, first I went on Festool's ECAT system to try to find, uh, one of these little Festool. This is a little M6, uh, knob. So I can pull it out. Um, I went on their ECAT system to see if I could find one of these small diameter Festool um, M6 knobs with a thread length long enough to basically stick out the bottom of this so that I could put an M6 nut on the bottom of it uh, and hold it in. Unfortunately, from all the searching I did, Festool doesn't make a small knob like this um, with a long uh, threaded section. So I went on McMaster Car and I found this, which is just a stainless steel knurled knob. It's actually really it's very nicely done. Um, stainless steel knurled knob, and then I've got the M6 um, knurled little little nut here for the bottom. Uh, and then this basically goes through the hole, uh, and then it you know goes onto the guide rail like you can see over here. And I'll show you that setup in a second. Um, and then this uh, nut here screws onto the bottom to hold it in place. The pins, um, these little pins, these are little teeny. They're they're only about two millimeters high. And they're six millimeters in diameter, um, and they allow this. If I come in here, you can see the main line. Sorry, I'm doing this with one hand, so it's a little bit difficult. You can see that when I when the pin lines up in the in the on the guide rail, um, this the hole that the uh, knurled knob goes through lines up with the with the hole before it. Um, so these are just locating pins. That's really all that is. All right. So that's that. Um, that's this particular piece. I'm going to pause the camera uh, and install this uh, and just talk a little bit more about it. Um, this knob here, this is 24 millimeters in diameter. The, uh, the Festool knob is 23. So that extra millimeter doesn't cause any problems in terms of the guide plate that rides on this rail um, going around this. It's not an issue. Um, the only thing that's a little bit, uh, I guess, disappointing um, is that if you come down here, you can see this thickness is a lot more than three quarters of an inch, which is a very common cabinet um, material thickness. And what that means is you, this is not gonna lay flat on a work surface while you're working on three quarter inch plywood. So if you're working with three quarter inch, you're gonna, or I mean, probably even inch, I, I haven't measured this, but it's pretty thick, you know, between the, the knob and then the actual piece of plastic. Um, you're gonna have to hang it off the edge of the table like I have here. And that's why, I mean, Festival, that's, why, that's what's so nice about this is that, that one-sided, there's no nut on the bottom, and so it just can rest right flat on the table, which is pretty cool. Um, but this one, you know, you're, you're going to have to hang it off the end, which I guess is the downside. But other than that, I mean, this, you know, it works great. And I actually, um, just, you know, messing around up here, um, I drew some marks. Um, this mark right here is 62.5, and this is 46.5. Um, and then these ones are the other holes, but basically 46.5 and 62.5 and I measured it with my uh, digital caliper Let's see, let me Turn this on here and we'll just let's go to just the 46.5 So we'll go out to call it 46.5 thereabouts and you can see 
just me messing around. Um, you know, and I didn't take a lot of care in drawing that pencil line. Um, but that's, I mean, it's pretty, pretty bang on. Uh, and the 62.5 is pretty solid as well. So happy with the way, really, really happy with the way that this LR32 um, end stop came out. Um, the other ones, that's the one that takes the longest to explain. Um, these ones will go a little bit quicker. So basically what we're looking at here, this is a microphone mount. Um, so you can see it's just a little Sony, um, like a lapel. It's a stereo lapel microphone. I picked it up on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know I'm a car guy. I like to do track days. And I have a, a BMW M Roadster that I got a year ago. Um, I took it to its first track day uh, a couple weeks ago, and I wanted decent audio. I mean, anybody who knows GoPros knows that the audio typically sucks, and I wanted, you know, decent engine noise um, to just record with the video. So I picked this up on Amazon, and uh, for that particular track day, I basically taped it uh, underneath the hood near the uh, air intake, uh, just taped it there, and it just, it looked shoddy. It worked fine. Um, you can check out that video. Um, and it, I think it sounds pretty good, but it just looks shoddy. And I figured, what the heck, a fun little project to try to create um, a, a mount for it. And so what happens is I, I basically broke off the lapel clip. You can see there's like a little there's like a little ridge on the back of this here. Uh, and there was a plastic lapel clip there. I broke that off um, to get access to the screw hole here. And, you know, thought, okay, fun 3D, you know, printing the project for the hell of it. Um, to create basically a mount for it. So the screw is in there now and it hold, you know it holds on to it obviously. And then this basically and I'll I'll put a picture of this uh, just a, a static picture of this in the video, but this basically mounts um, to a bolt that holds the airbox in place. So it's just just for fun, um, nice, you know, nice looking installation at least. Um, you know, but it's a microphone holder. Um, and I took all the measurements for, for actually all these things, all the measurements were taken with the digital calipers and then I modeled them in SketchUp. Um, in this case, the one thing I will mention about this is that in inside this hole, there's a little lip that the um, screw sits on to hold this in place. And like any material, um, you know, this flexible, strong plastic has its limits. And Shapeways basically says the wall thickness can go down to seven tenths of a millimeter, point seven millimeters. Um, and in this case, it just pure chance, the math with the diameter of the screw and the diameter of the hole in the back of the microphone and all this kind of stuff, it just worked out that uh, I needed a little lip in there that was exactly point seven millimeters. And I will say that when when I you know when I took this out of the wrapper from Shapeways. Um, the 0.7 millimeters got it, it was a little bit rough. I mean, you could tell that that was right at the very, very limits of the printer, and it didn't it didn't look quite as sharp as uh, the rest of it looks. Um, but it worked nonetheless. Uh, just thought I'd point that out about the wall thickness. So it's a microphone holder, um, and then basically over here, this is um, a base foot for this Bosch uh, laser pole over here. Uh, this is basically, it's a, it's a Bosch, I have a Bosch uh, laser that shines a laser around a room to mark a level line. And you can see the, the red and the black sections and the, and the black foot down there, it's extendable. So you basically put one end on the floor, you tighten one end of the ceiling, and then the mount, which you can see right there, um, holds the laser, right? So I was working with this in a project outside on a, a concrete patio, pushed it over, and the foot on this end broke. Um, the pole's about 80 bucks, so I was I was not you know ready to just sort of say okay you know just get a new pole. Um, I called Bosch up. Of course, they don't make parts for it, which I was disappointed about. So I said okay, let me see if I can fix this myself and build you know build a new part. So that's what this is. This is basically the replacement foot um, for this Bosch pole. It works works really really well. Um, what I did was the the plastic foot that broke. I basically salvaged these bolts. Um, these are just they you know these are the ones that came with the pole. Um, and then I actually, I had the, I had the, this is a rubber washer that just provides traction on the floor. And I had that rubber washer. Um, and I actually, when I was at Home Depot, just trying to figure out threads and, 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 you know, hardware and stuff like that, I left it at Home Depot. So I had to buy a new washer. So I went on McMaster car and found, uh, found this washer. Um, yeah, so basically, so I took, you know, I had, I took the washer measurements. I took all the bolt measurements. Um, I even, it has to be screwed on with a socket, so I even took socket measurements to make sure that everything would fit. And basically what I did was, this is actually, this, this is the, um, this is the bottom of it, this is the top of it. 
So this bolt uh, sits in here like that, and this will give you an idea of some of the tolerances. Um, I mean, that, that it's got a little play. Uh, I think I designed in like 0.3 millimeters or something like that, but I mean, that fits in there just about perfect. Um, so this basically goes on here like this. Um, and I'm not gonna do this whole thing because I've only got one hand here. Um, but basically that goes on like that. This comes up and sits right on top. And then in here you can see this is where all the parts go. So washer, uh, lock washer, and then this little low profile uh, nut here. Sorry, that's kind of hard to tighten up uh, with one hand, but basically this all gets tightened up um, onto the pole. And then I got the washer here. And again, you can tell the tolerances. If you look at how I put this washer in, um, it just kind of cinches in. So I'm gonna go around the outside, just clip, 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 clip. Um, and then once it's in, I mean, that's not coming out. It's not glued or anything, but it's in tight enough that it's not gonna come out on its own. Um, you know, nice, nice tight tolerance. I was very impressed with this. And even coming back, talking about tolerances, coming back to the end stop here, um, the Festival one is obviously, that was what I based my design off of. And this is 12 millimeters uh, here by 10 millimeters high. And when I put the calipers on this one, I think it was like 11.93 or something like that by 9.98. So a little bit under, but I mean, you know, three hundredths of a millimeter, seven hundredths of a millimeter. Um, it's really not a lot at all. So I, I was I'm pretty impressed with kind of the way that the tolerances came out. Um, so yeah, so these are my these are my 3D printed parts. Just wanted to give people an idea of what to expect if you try it. Um, very very happy with the way that they came out. And uh, so that, that ends this part of the video, and then I'll just show you um, my models and sketch so you can see sort of what those look like.